Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 48 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about in September 2018 the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority or APRA released a paper on the use of cloud computing stressing the nature of cloud computing services. Hi Dave it's great to have you back on another Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back, and this is kind of an interesting story based on you know the maturation of uh, Australia and around the cloud computing uh, trend. Yeah, exactly right. So, look, you know, opening question for you then: In your opinion, what can Australian companies do to ensure that they are ready for cloud computing? Well, I'm not sure reading this paper is going to make them ready for cloud computing. Uh, I just think it's it's kind of funny. A lot of the government agencies, we in in the United States, we have NIST. They chime in on on what cloud computing is and the maturation of the thing. And I think it's just kind of gotten away from uh, the existing, uh, you know, regulatory authorities and, you know, writing papers like this. And, you know, it's a, it's a nice little indication of where we are and kind of where we're, you know, looking at our strategy. And I think rightfully so, they're calling the fact that enterprises, uh, you know, probably don't have an optimized strategy to allow them to leverage cloud computing. But, you know, this kind of highlights the fact that all of these enterprises are on their individual journeys and ultimately they have to have enough planning that occurs to make these journeys uh, work for them. So I just think that they're kind of stating the obvious here. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be uh, a report for report's sake sometimes, doesn't it? Uh, and in fact, um, the analyst firm Gartner has predicted that there's going to be a 17.3 percent surge in the de in the demand for public cloud services, uh, which is you know taking the market to around the sort of 206 billion US dollar um, area of finance in 2019. And Australia, sort of in itself, the cloud demand is rising even faster with the local market research or that's been done in that area, which is expected to grow to 20.6 percent uh, to reach about 5.6 billion Australian dollars over the next year so you know things are really growing at such a rate aren't they yeah they are and, and uh, what's being brought up in this report is the fact that the matter is we need to kind of split the responsibility between the providers and people who provide the services and those who are consuming it and it's really kind of making people aware that ultimately this is something that has to be dealt with um, as we start building these SLAs and start building these longer term relationships with cloud computing providers yeah, it's, it's interesting you, you say about that shared responsibility. Where, where do you think that could really fall down? Well, if, if the um, providers aren't living up to their, <clears throat> their end of the bargain, and so their ability to you know, kind of make sure they're not doing things with outages and, and for maintaining correct security and governance and you know, billing, and, or they're not raising their prices significantly where it doesn't really make uh, sense that we continue on with that provider. I mean, all these things could go wrong. And I think everybody kind of anticipated them to show up in the marketplace by now, and it hasn't occurred yet. I think what they're saying is that um, this is going to be a long-term marriage between Amazon and Google and, and uh, Alibaba and, uh, and Microsoft. And your ability to kind of create a master agreement that's going to get you through most of the steps in the maturation process over the next 10 years is going to be absolutely vital to the success. And the reality is that we have to put the onus on the service providers as well as the enterprises to do the correct amount of planning to make sure they're going to be successful with the technology. Any technology is basically something you have to you know, do, but this is something that's fairly different because we're so dependent on an organization that we don't own or control. They're not giving us technology. We're in essence leveraging utility and we have to be able to tr trust the utility provider. So very true. I mean, it leads us on nicely, I guess, to your, your top three tips on this subject, Dave, if you'd be uh, good enough to share those. Yeah, number one is understand you're creating a partnership going forward, and this is something that's going to be sustainable over a long period of time. Um, I can't remember any time in my career where I was advising clients to pick a technology they're going to be so dependent on over the next you know, 10 years, 15 years going down the road, where... You know, other things like database technology, operating system platforms, things like that, you picked for a um, instance of time, you knew eventually the technology was going to get outmoded, something better was going to come along. Well, when the cloud service providers are, in essence, the utility that's providing all of the technology and their ability to provide that technology in a sustainable way 
that's going to continue to allow you to be successful is absolutely going to be imperative. Make sure you outline expectations and deal with SLA-based stuff. We now have lawyers and whole groups within organizations. Typically, it's called a cloud business office, which is negotiating these agreements with the um, with the cloud providers. And it's absolutely in it's absolutely on the critical path that you do this in a very methodical way because typically those are the agreements you need to rely upon if you have sort of legal issues that you need to resolve. And of course, the way the laws are enforced varies from country to country. It's different on Australia than it is in the US and different in Europe. But you need to, in essence, figure out the law, the land, your ability to kind of reduce the risk that these things could run, uh, run afoul of each other. Uh, leverage outside verification when, where needed. Uh, the ability to kind of leverage people who have done this before for other businesses uh, and there's lots of consulting organizations that specialize in this. This is absolutely something you should be doing because ultimately they're going to be able to normalize what your deal is, what, what everybody else is getting. And, you know, make sure that you're not, uh, you know, paying above invoice price for, you know, for what you're you know, looking to pay. And I think many enterprises are overpaying now because they're not negotiating correctly with some of these service providers. So you need to be able to get the inside track and make sure you're not overpaying those systems. You could, you know, spend you know, tens of millions of dollars could be tossed away when you could spend them on other things in the organization to really kind of help the business. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. In fact, that third point resonates with me quite a lot because we actually um, spoke on a couple of shows ago about the importance of measuring the, the current cost of cloud um, and, and not only sort of before you venture into a, an agreement or a contract, knowing what your, uh, your, your, not only knowing your budget, but your expectations of the cloud and what the cost will be. But I think it's a very, very important point. And you're right, you know, millions, if not billions, are lost globally on, uh, you know, expenditure, which is completely unnecessary. So, you know, great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. Anytime. <laughs> and thanks for being part of the Australia show, as always. It's always great to be here, man. Excellent. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I myself am on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all those places you can reach us. Uh, David writes some great blogs as well. Below in the description box, there are links to all our social media and to our website where you've got blogs, etc., etc. So check that out. And uh, yeah, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. And click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks again for watching and until next week.